What do you mean by a state model of a control system? Well, my name is Rishi Ramju. Welcome to the Backwards Engineering Community, where I make it really easy for you. So, let us ask ourselves that obvious question. What do you actually mean by the term state model of a control system? Well, let's find out. So, let us consider a particular multi-input, multi-output system like this. An MIMO. Here, a multi-input, multi-output system. So, the speciality of a multi-input, multi-output system is that multiple inputs can be given to the system to obtain multiple outputs. So, the first set of inputs over here, let us take it as a u1 of t and u2 of t. Let these be represented as input variables. And now, a second set of inputs over here, let these given be x1 of t and x2 of t. Let these be the state variables. So therefore, if that is the case, then we would obtain a set of outputs over here, say y1 of t and y2 of t. And let these be the output variables. So, upon analyzing such kind of a multi-input, multi-output system using state space analysis, we get two equations. The first one is the output equation and the second one is a state equation. And therefore, the combination of these two equations, which is the output equation and the state equation together, is simply what you refer to as a state model. These two equations collectively is simply what you refer to as a state model. So first, let us see what you refer to as the output equation. So the output equation. So the output equation is simply an equation that is used for the purpose of understanding or identifying the relationship between this particular output variables and this input variables and state variables. So let us first take the first output variable y1 of t. So y1 of t is equal to, here y1 of t, we have to identify an equation where this y1 of t, that is the output variable, is related to these state variables and input variables. So first, y1 of t is equal to some kind of a coefficient c into this particular first state variable x1 of t plus another coefficient c into the second state variable x2 of t. Plus, here, another coefficient say d into the first input variable u1 of t. Plus, another coefficient d into the second input variable say u2 of t. But here, since all these coefficients are related to the input first output signal or the first output variable y1 of t, here, this particular suffix would be 1, 1, 1 one like this. But here, since here it is x1 of t, the next suffix would be 1. But here, since it is x2 of t, the next suffix would be 2. Here, since it is u1 of t, the next suffix would be 1. And since here it is u2 of t, the next suffix would be 2. So similarly, we could write the equation for the next output variable y2 of t is equal to, say, c21 into x1 of t plus c22 into x2 of t plus d21 into u1 of t plus d22 into u2 of t. So, while analyzing these two equations, we could understand for a fact that these could be written in the form of a matrix. Here, we, these two variables, output variables, y1 of t and y2 of t, they can be represented as a 2 by 1 matrix, that is y1 of t and y2 of t as the two elements like this. This is equal to the first set of coefficients, which is c11, c12, c21, c22. These coefficients multiplied by the state variables, that is x1 of t and x2 of t, plus the next set of coefficients, which is d11, d12, d21, d22, multiplied by the input variables u1 of t and u2 of t. 
So this can be simplified of the form. This can be written as capital Y of T is equal to capital C into X of T plus capital D into U of T. This is the required output equation. So similarly, we can now also find the state equation. So here in the case of an output equation, we found out the relationship between the output variables and these input and the state variables. But in the case of a state equation, here we find the relationship of the first derivative of these state variables that is d by dt of x1 of t and d by dt of x2 of t. So we find the relationship between the first derivative of the state variables with these input variables and state variables. So the first equation would be d by dt of x1 of t which is nothing but x1 dash of t. So this can be written as say a11 into x1 of t that is some coefficient into the first state variable x1 of t plus a12 into x2 of t plus another coefficient say b11 into this particular input variable u1 of t plus b12 into u2 of t. Similarly, we can also write d by dt of x2 of t is equal to x2 dash of t which is nothing but a21 into x1 of t plus a22 into x2 of t plus b21 into u1 of t plus b22 into u2 of t. This can also be written in the form of a matrix where here we would have x1 dash of t and x2 dash of t. This is equal to the first set of coefficients say a11, a12, a21, a22 multiplied by x1 of t and x2 of t. Plus the next set of coefficients which is b11, b12, b21, b22 multiplied by the set of input variables u1 of t and u2 of t. So therefore this could be written in the form capital X dash of t is equal to capital A into X of t plus capital B into U of t. This is the required state equation. So these thus are simply what you refer to as the output equation and the state equation of a particular multi-input, multi-output system by analyzing it by using state space analysis. As simple as that guys, there's nothing more to it. This is simply what I refer to as a state model of a particular control system. As simple as that guys, there's nothing more to it. So I hope you guys now have a clear understanding of what you refer to as a state model of a control system. And if you guys found this video informative, please do hit the like button and join this community by hitting that subscribe button. We'll be discussing about the further topics in the upcoming videos. So stay tuned, stay subscribed. Until next time, I'll see you in the next video. Thank you.